Hello everyone, today we're getting back into making things for Blender in terms of Blender tools and resources. Finally, I think it's time to return to form. I used to make so many things for the Blender community. I think there was a point in time where I had like the most free stuff going for the community and combined in terms of like sales and downloads and stuff, I can see that it's over a quarter of a million downloads, over 300,000 downloads now for all different stuff and that's just on Gumroad. That used to be like the main thing I did and then I kind of slowed down over time for a number of reasons like the work of YouTube just starts twisting your mind and gives you these mental conditions that you don't know you have to deal with. So I invested a lot of time into kind of breaking down the psychology of that and finding solutions. And then at the same time, all this medical stuff happened, which adds different kinds of mental issues. So then you have to unpack those as well. And I've done the work. So over the next few days, you're going to get an onslaught of new things, probably a mix of free and paid things, I'm unsure, because there's an element of randomization that's going to be occurring. So something old something new something pink something blue what am i going to make for you today well first of all i need a coin just to establish the categories of what i'm going to be looking at but since everything's cashless nowadays the only coin i could find was just a little token from a certain film so one sec i'm sure this is very flattering the uh the piece of what is it aztec gold from the pirates of the caribbean series <laughs> so at least it's a fun thing to use all right then coin should i make something from a pre-existing experimental file or should i try and take a look at some of my actual work files so old work files on the computer experimental products that's experimental products one to 30. getting a number we're given 19 emissive lighting i mean come on we've done afterglow so i need to do emissive lighting demos again i'm gonna make an executive decision i'm supposed to follow what this guide system gives me but i feel like that's cheating we need some variability rolling again one screen effect oh yes okay so this is the file in question and if i play the timeline it was an old demo from an old file i believe this is running in eevee yep yeah. And we're playing a video on a screen and it's projected uh, across the whole screen there. Just swapping over to cycles to see what that looks like as well. Obviously slower, but the lighting is diegetic in the way that it's kind of projecting through, but it looks like we've got an area light there that may or may not be required. Cool, but it just adds some nice stuff on the volumetric back to EV. Okay, so this is on Gumroad as an experimental file. Let's take a look at that. Aha, so it's on Gumroad for $1. The package contains a demo file showing you how you can project video content onto objects and free five-star ratings. Thank you. So the question is, what do I do with this to make something new for you? Well, let's think about projection. Is it projecting that way because it's kind of flat towards the camera? What happens if I move the camera? Does the projection change? No, that's good. I wonder if we can kind of move them around if I rotate the object. Right, but what if I want it to stay attached to the object? Like if I surrounded the screens around the character to provide like a kind of complex light projection from like multiple screens at once. Like if we had the character there, and then you know like you got one square there one kind of pointing in that way and then like one above etc so like you could have like a complex structure of things surrounding it like a kind of more artistic version of those vfx screens they use for like the mandalorian and stuff but anywho uh, if they were uv'd i wonder we would have to combine the total set of the squares uv them then split them up let me make a variant of this file I'm going to call it a screen effect 12525 because that's when I'm doing this. So let's take a look at the squares. If I maybe open up like a UV editor. Yeah, individually they have some stuff on there, but that's not really what I want. I want to combine them all, then just take the front faces and then have those projected on the UV map. So then it should be relatively stable. So I guess the first thing to do there is just join everything. So let's take a look. LEDs. I even gave them like number coding in case I wanted to do some kind of like Python stuff. Then we'd be able to grab like the coordinate positions of the different screen cells by ID like by name and then it looks like I kind of gave up around that point lol or is that just the shells the other shells don't really need IDs but let's combine them all together join nice so they still work and then I have these connecting pieces in between they might get in the way if I'm trying to move the cells around, so I'll just hide those for now. So we've got our square cells here. Uh, when it comes to the UV mapping, I'm actually just gonna maybe delete all the UVs except for like the front ones, that's all we'll need. I don't suppose I need to delete them. Can I do that? Aha, mesh.uv texture underscore remove. Okay, great. Now I just want to try and like select all the front faces. Wait, why can't I choose that? Oh, okay, nice. It's a bit hard to see. Maybe I'll go into solid mode. God, the shading makes it really hard to see what faces I'm clicking on there. I'm not going to make you sit through me clicking all of these. So maybe I'll just edit this forward. 
All right, so I don't know what this will look like if I just tried projecting it as is. Uh, let's see, conformal, we got gaps doing that way. Would it make sense to do a cube projection? Yes, I guess it would. Now at the moment I've got it set up for a 1920 by 1080 grid here. If I just scale that up and then try and make sure like the, the margin is pretty much the same like that. Yeah, that's good enough. In theory, that should work, right? So if I change the mapping to UV and then just plug that into the vector, and then play, then if I move them around, it should be, yes, the video is stable. So it's no longer changing with the camera position. Perfect, that's kind of exactly what I wanted. Wonderful. So that would mean that if we now split it up and we can move the individual like TV cells, we wanna think about it that way, around the character and it would still be projecting the video. And then we would know that we can use any 1920 by 1080 video in that lighting setup and it would be projecting the different parts of the video to the different screens. Then in theory, once you know that, you could actually kind of create some kind of editing workflow where you can design like bespoke lighting videos to project on the screens. Well, let's just test that quickly. I'm gonna make a copy of the screen and I'll just call it backup screens select the move tool okay now well let's take like a strip of them shall we oh yeah we'll just take one strip from the end press p to separate by selection so in theory like if i play the timeline i can move that and you see that it's still playing the screen or the video in theory because it's uv based i can change the origin and it will still play the video in the same place nice so the mapping is pretty perfect in that regard look at that i can rotate it around and it's still playing the video Excellent. So then obviously I could like move it up to the character. Now the emission won't be fantastic. I think it's quite a low emission at the moment. But say if I hide that one and let's hide the area light, we're going to try and make it brighter. So emission is only on strength 10 at the moment. It may, yeah, it will blow out the video. I know there's oh, probably a way to solve that, but it also depends on like your color grading or your color like view transform. But as the video plays, the color will change on the character there. Let me just take a quick look at uh, welding. What have we got here? Oh, there is a bit of like fog in the world as well. That's interesting. So now we've got this kind of overlap of fog. And as the content on the screens change, it's providing different color to that fog. So I know this is a bit of a dark demo at the moment. Actually, that's looking pretty cool. But if I amplify a bit more, then you can kind of see there that that's a relatively strong effect. Let's, I mean, I kind of like this angle because I like the silhouette of my um, rigged base character. By the way, this is one of my rigged characters available in another Gumroad pack. Let me show you. They're not super high quality rigs, by the way, but they get a job done. They're just like placeholders you can sort of, you know, pose around. And these were done ages ago. It's like my kind of attempts over time at sculpting a human-like form and doing slightly less human types. So if you want to check it out, you can. It's only like $5. Again, not super high quality rigs. They're just what I've been doing to like substitute something better at a later time. Anyway, so let's make a camera, align camera to view. There we go. So let's get something a little bit moody there, silhouette wise. And now let's consider bringing in some other parts. So I will separate some more uh, columns and we can always separate them down into like even more finite pieces and align the origin there. So basically the origins for the columns I'm separating are going to be central to them. So rather than being offset over there, I'm going to set it to geometry. Gives us a bit more easier control over the movement. Those back ones are providing a lot of light in this view now. Oh, looks like I messed that up. Whoopsie. Let's go back a few steps. I accidentally didn't select the top pieces. La 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 la. Okay, solve that one. How embarrassing. Professional Blender user here, by the way. But since I've moved to this new version of Blender 4.4, um, my pie menus have changed a bit. So like um, X-ray view and stuff like that is uh, something I need to reintroduce my muscle memory to, like knowing whether I'm actually grabbing stuff entirely all the way through the object. Are you kidding? I did it again? All right, this. I'll leave this in the video so you can not feel alone. Okay, one more time. Let's not blunder anymore. Okay, so I'm um, X-rayed. Column, check, good, P, selection. Let's not embarrass ourselves anymore. Next one, vertex, look up, x-ray, yes, good. Select the column, all selected, P, selection, good. Set the origin to geometry, move along. Great, no more embarrassing blunders. Get rid of the back wall, check out the silhouette, yes, nice. And you can start to see where I'm going with it. I just realized that the camera position has a keyframe on it, so let's clear that off. Even as I fly the camera in, obviously it's very foggy because of the volumes, but use your imagination here. We can imagine some cool like artistic animation type things, advertisement like things maybe. Nice. And then again, as the video plays, we get color changes. 
I just had a thought about the blown out screens. What if I mess with ray visibility? So this is the same thing I've done with emissive lights in Afterglow, but let's say if I name this column one, column two, column three, maybe I should have made a different variation of the file after it was UV mount, but whatever. If I duplicate each of them, and then if I make a variation of the material called screen light, which I'll apply to the ones I'm gonna make invisible. So there'll be an invisible one producing the higher emission light, and then the regular ones will be lower. So we'll say that's like 10. It's like whatever we want the screen to actually look like maybe 30 and then for screen light we'll keep it at a high value like 300. Okay notice that when the light one is not occluded then it's giving light so what I can do is I can offset it slightly on the local y and then actually maybe parent it yeah to column one. Hang on I think I did that the wrong way around. There we go parent keep transform and then finally what if I visibility camera like that is that right? So we're getting the light Hang on, I know this is confusing, bear with me. Yeah, so we see the screen as we want it. We get the light from the screen from the invisible one, but the fog is kind of occluding it. Let me turn the world fog down. Screen, light, screen, light. See? Okay, I get that's confusingly explained. Basically, to put it simply, we have two versions of the column existing at once. The invisible one's giving light, and the visible one has a lower light value, so it makes it less blown out. Let's turn down the world volume a bit, so maybe one five. Okay, well, maybe I will do that for the others and see how it looks. Okay, that's done. So obviously it's producing a lot of light now. The original video is not exactly that clear because it's, you know, kind of weird and faded anyway. But as I scrub through it, we should still be able to see the, well, some details off of it. So not completely blown out. Now I can actually turn down the light provided while the screen still say the same. So I'm affecting the material on the invisible ones. So that gives us a finite control. Good. I think that's okay. So now when we're moving the columns, we have to make sure we're moving the parental one. Okay, how long has this been going on for? We'll do a little bit more and then I'll upload it as a additional file in that screen effects gumro package. And then maybe I'll up the price by a couple of dollars to compensate for the additional work put into it. Maybe before I up the file, I should do the same thing for the others. So I'll split them into their columns and then do the parental invisible light thing so that you will know you have this tool available where you have all these columns you can project video light on and you can separate the visual look from the light provided. That seems appropriate, right? So you'll actually have this lighting tool available to you. Okay, let's do it. Is there anything you want to talk about while we're doing this? Yes, you. I'm asking you. What do you want to talk about? Come on. What have you been up to recently? What have you been playing? I've been playing the new Oblivion Remastered because I absolutely adored that game when I was younger. I've actually, I've got another channel called Reference Board, by the way. I started putting some gameplay videos on that, but we put more of a focus on talking about the environment art and the attention to detail. It's a brand new channel. It's very kind of low intensity, low stakes. So if you want to come along to that, you can. You're very welcome. There's no particular upload schedule for my other channels or really any channel, not even for this one. We used to try and do things on a weekly basis, but you know, like I said at the beginning, things change over time. All right, so I believe that's every column separated. Now, wait, what happens if I do origin to geometry with multiple selected? That does work, okay, great. So let's select the others, origin to geometry, perfect. Um, so that's one, two, three. Oh, I've got to do the naming, fun. I always do this thing when I need to do a lot of naming where like if I select this, in my clipboard, I've got like column and then a space. So like the last one was seven. So I do paste, eight. Select the next one, paste, nine. Select the next one, paste. 10, etc. So very small like speed ups in a workflow. So there are 16 columns and now we need to do the light process. So column four, duplicate, slightly move forward, select the other one, control P, keep transform and then hide from camera in the ray visibility. That should be right. Okay, let's get into the flow of doing that. So five, duplicate, slightly forward, select the other, control P, keep transform, select the light one, camera. Oh, I also need to actually apply the light material to it. So screen light and for number four, screen light. Sometimes it's hard to remember every task when you're having to do complex things repeatedly. So that's four and five, move them along. Oh, that's what I should also do is have them non-selectable light objects. So that if someone wants to click and, and like move them around, they're not selecting the wrong thing. I, however, did select the wrong thing to be non-selectable. So testing, 
Yep, good. Yep, okay. Need to do the same thing here. Non-selectable, non-selectable. Right, so people can just click and grab those without worrying about grabbing the wrong thing. Talking about Oblivion Remastered, I'm actually listening to the soundtrack as I'm doing this. What an absolute banger. <laughs> Column six, parent it. Make it non-selectable. Apply the right material. Object, make invisible to camera. It's another one done. Tell me, what's your favorite game? Where do you get your inspiration from? I've been watching a lot of movies again recently. I've been kind of inspired to watch films again because I stumbled on a channel recently called The Media Nights. I, I was never really into reaction channels much, but The Media Nights uh, in particular, I think they're husband and wife, I'm not sure. Ari and Denise, they just have such like a nice vibe to them. Really great personalities when watching the movies and it never feels like the movies are insulted. It feels like every film is given the right kind of respect while they're watching it, even if they historically didn't do too well. So I just really enjoy watching them. Like I've always been more of a cinema wins rather than a cinema sins kind of guy. You know what I mean? You know those two channels, Cinema Sins versus Cinema Wins? I always despised Cinema Sins. The reason is because I just don't like being like so negative about films all the time. It just reminds me of like people that want to point out flaws in everything. So that's why I prefer Cinema Wins. I think we should like, you know, celebrate the positivity in life rather than trying to find flaws in everything. Uh, oh, I did the wrong material there. That should be screen and that should be screen light. We're nearly done. I'll do like a little validation pass as well afterwards in case I missed a little step. For example, let me check the, yeah, I forgot to do the camera on that. Yeah, I'll check them afterwards. And yeah, I've pulled all the like the light objects out to slightly different amounts, just kind of freehand, but that really doesn't matter. No one's gonna notice, no one's gonna care. And if they do, they can just like grab it themselves, make it selectable and then pull it out more if they like. Okay, I think that should be done. Again, maybe I need to just validate it again. But if I, Make sure I have like the screen light material selected and then there you go. We have like, aha, well, that's implying something. I've made mistakes there, you see. Hmm, interesting. Column 15, check. Yep, camera visibility was not right. I had accidentally done the visibility on the room one. Next up, 10. Yep, that should be fixed. What else have we got here? Eight. Material is correct, but that means the visibility was not the wrong one was made invisible okay so now there we go so all the screens are visible as they are but we have these invisible lighting objects which is flooding more light in the scene without specifically overexposing the video footage now maybe just before we close it up i might you know move some of these things around now since now they're really easy to grab and move around because we did the par parenting properly maybe i'll hide the ones i don't need so columns 7 to 16 in the background Oh yeah, that's another thing as well. We also need to disable the visibility for the other. So what I'll do instead, just to keep it simple, is I'll put them in a collection. So seven to 16 will be hidden columns. And then I will just disable that one. Oh, because they weren't selectable, I didn't put the child ones in as well. So actually, let me just grab those and drag them in. There we go. So that can be enabled and disabled. And there is still light poking out the back because I don't have proper backs of these objects. So that may or may not be annoying, depending on how you want to set that up. But I think it's all right for now. Uh, I don't need the curse hold logo. Let's delete that. But I'd say that's about it. If I had like a higher contrast video, then we'd be able to get like all different kinds of, of demos. You would literally just, you know, open it from the video file here and be able to play it. I wonder actually, do I have any of my YouTube videos exported? One sec. I do have a recent video on Blender Artists. But yeah, it'd be a bit too much to expect that to work straight out. So the thing is, it's a different resolution. Maybe that's why the mapping doesn't quite work with it. But even still though, cool highlight on the character there. If I hid the other objects, I'm not going to break it. We're going to stick to what we know works. There we go. And I will put this file online. I'm just going to name it to screen effect UV columns like that. And the file is not necessarily as organized as it could be. But if you've watched this, then you understand what's happening. I've created a new file, which is screen effect May 2025. And I will upload that. So that's available now. And I've just put a note in the description updated May 2025 with an experimental UV column version. And I just upped the price from one to three dollars just to reflect the additional work. So if you made it this far through the video, put some kind of screen TV related emoji in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. Otherwise, grab the file because you help to support me by doing that. Or you can sign up to my Patreon, which also has some exclusive content or check out my other products, which are much more comprehensive on codicel.online slash store. So we've got Afterglow. If you like lighting, that's the best one. Hex scatter for generating semi-procedural materials from non-seamless texture sources, modular workspaces for extending the user interface, and a whole bunch of other things which are legacy and I should definitely get back to. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.